What is up, everyone? I am Amp from the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast, and today we are continuing on with our Broken Skull Session Series recaps. I appreciate all the nice comments and the support. I'm not doing a full-on, you know, serious deep dive into what's happening. I'm pretty much giving you guys just a basic summary of the main points from the episodes a lot of the episodes are you know they range from 58 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes and there's some stuff on there that is not as significant so please bear with me and just know that this is a recap of the important aspects of everything i do talk about everything that they talk about but there are some things i go more into in detail with and things that i don't so today's episode is all on jerry the king waller and uh, Stone Cold welcomes King and Lawler says he's been in the business for 50 years and he's never seen anything like this COVID situation or this time. Now, this was filmed in March of 2020. So this is just as COVID. I'm sorry, this is April 2020. So this is just as COVID uh, is hitting. He remembers doing Raw and, you know, back in the day they would pre-record it in the studio and he feels like it's back to that time again because during COVID times, fans were not allowed to attend the shows. He says doing wrestling without a crowd is really hard. He remembers fighting Terry Funk in an empty arena match. And Terry says everyone here is in Jerry's corner. They're all fans. He wanted to fight Jerry Lawler without anyone. And this match happened in 1981 in Memphis. And during the match, Terry screamed, my eye. Um, and it was off the cuff. It wasn't planned. Jerry Lawler wasn't sure if it was real or not. The match stopped. Um, and uh, Dory Funk Jr. booked for Florida, and Jerry Lawler and Terry Funk fought down in Florida as well. Uh, Memphis, the Memphis territory was known for bloody matches, and the territories you fought to went up all the time because you fought the same people. So everybody was fighting the same way and you wanted to have a better match every time you got out there because you were fighting the same people over and over and over again because of the people based in your territory. Jerry Lawler hates to bleed. He hated bleeding himself, which I can imagine because I would not want to as well. A secret fact, well, it's kind of well known, but some people might not know this, is that Jerry Lawler is a great artist. He wanted to draw superheroes when he was a kid. His dad was a fan of wrestling and Lawler started drawing pictures of wrestlers and Lawler sent the pictures to TV stations and they showed his artwork on television. And Lenny Russell called him and Jackie Fargo had him paint pictures for Fargo's nightclub. Jackie Fargo is a very famous wrestler. He didn't, Lawler didn't want to become a wrestler until working for Jackie Fargo. That's when he wanted to do it. They went to an independent wrestling company and Lawler told the promoter that he would promote the company on the radio show that Lawler hosted back in Memphis as if he was able to fight and the promoter agreed. He learned how to punch by watching Jackie Fargo and Fargo selling was great. You could feel the beatings that Fargo would get from his opponents. So he remembers that King would loosen his straps and he remembers getting punched accidentally um he you know after getting punched he's accidentally spat on a woman the lady sued him and when they asked her you know you know when they got to court why are you suing him and she said you know because she didn't like him um you know she said that she didn't like the fact that he pulled his straps down and that she just didn't like him so it was a crazy situation king then said in an interview um, I've been the king of Memphis. You've been the king of Memphis, but I'll be the king taking over your throne. And then after King beat Fargo, a fan in the ring in the antennas started calling him the king. Bobby Shane uh, had a crown and a robe, and Shane left Jerry Lawler. He let Jerry Lawler borrow the crown and robe, and uh, Lawler became the king of Memphis after wearing that. And it was tragic about the situation as Bobby Shane, he was a wrestler at the time. He got killed in a plane crash, so he kind of was the king of Memphis. Um, Jerry Lawler saw the original Sheik use a fireball, so Lawler started doing the same thing. And during a time, he fought Sheik. And uh, he remembers tossing a paper at Iron Sheik's chest. 
without it being lit and he was embarrassed. Um, he credits Kurt, Kurt Henning as being awesome and Nick Bockwinkle uh, dropping the title to Kurt Henning. King won the title from Kurt and he believes that Kurt Henning sold very well in the match. He thinks Randy Savage is great to work with. He and Savage sold out an arena, and Savage is really over. He talks about Bill Dundee. Uh, Lawler and Bundy, the two of them weren't great friends. He had a partner. Uh, King got injured when he came back. He felt that Bill got upset and didn't realize how long in the territory King had been in. So the King was a top guy. King got injured. Bill Dundee takes over, and he's upset when King comes back. They had over 500 matches together. Uh, and then Bill fought King in a hair versus hair match. And at one point he lost and then he put his wife's hair on the line and the wife got her hair cut. And then he starts to talk about Andy Kaufman. Taxi was the number one rated show, which Andy Kaufman was a part of. Andy was influenced by pro wrestling. He loved performing and making people feel uncomfortable. And Andy wanted to be a bad guy wrestler like Buddy Rogers, who was and one of Andy's hero. And Andy would start getting into wrestling by challenging girls to fight in clubs. And he wanted to fight in front of a crowd. We see a promo of Andy Coffin making fun of Southerners. Um, and Andy told, you know, King told him, you know, you have to fight a man. You know, you and I could have a match and I'll make sure you don't get hurt. Because Coffin was afraid he was going to get beat up and get injured. During the match, Andy took three pie drivers and pretended to be knocked out. Um, he tells King, I'm not getting up. I will pay for the ambulance. Please call an ambulance and I will sell it. And they got stretchered out. And we are going to take a quick break after that moment with Clubman being stretched out. When we come back, we're going to talk about the infamous David Letterman segment with Jerry Lawler and um, everybody else. And we're going to talk about his WrestleMania 27 match at and his first media match of all time. And we will be right back, so stick tuned. The Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast family would like you to check out Anchor. With Anchor, you can record, edit, and publish your own podcast for free. Distributing your podcasts have, has never been this e easy with Anchor, which allows you to send out your podcast to platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and much, much more. Get uncensored and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back to the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. We're going to continue on with our Broken Skull Sessions recap with Jerry the King Lawler. We learn about the David Letterman interview, and the interview was ad-libbed. Initially, Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman were supposed to shake hands, and Andy was going to sing, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Um, and Jerry Lawler told Andy Kaufman that, you know, if they did that segment where they hugged and shook hands and everyone sang, they would never fight on TV again. And Andy didn't want that. So during the segment, you know, Jerry Lawler slaps Andy Kaufman. They come back for a second segment. Everyone was shocked. And then that got that segment got huge notoriety. David Letterman said that show, that segment made him famous. That's huge. We then talk about Jim Carrey, who is a star in uh the movie about Andy Kaufman and uh, Jim Jerry Lawler believes that Jim Carrey thought Andy and the King didn't like each other. Jim became Andy Kaufman for 80 days. That's what Jerry King Lawler says. Um, the first time Lawler saw Jim on set, Jim Carrey tossed orange juice at Lawler and yelled, I'll get you Lawler. Um, <laughs> and King tells a story about how he ended up accidentally feeding Jim Carrey his lines and Jim got up, went into a corner and screamed and said, I cannot be near this guy anymore. So Jim Carrey is going through it. And he, and Lawler felt like he, he felt like Jim Carrey didn't understand uh, Andy Kaufman. We then go to June. We then go to 1993 in June. Uh, Vince McMahon has a steroid trial going on and he brought in Jerry Jarrett in to help out for WWE. And he brought in Jerry Lawler as well. 
at the time, a lot of guys worked for King and Jerry Jarrett in Memphis, and they were upset. And there was one incident where Jimmy Hart told the King not to look at his crown because someone took a shit in Walter's crown. Uh, King said, listen, I'll go home. I won't do this. And Vince promised him it would never happen again. And it never did. Waller never thought of doing commentating. There was a time where uh, Randy Savage jumped ship to WCW without telling anyone. And in November 1994, Jerry Lawler joined the commentating table. He loved commentating with Vince McMahon. He loved joking with Vince about his fake wig. Vince would wear a toupee. He wouldn't wear a toupee, but Vince always, uh, Jerry Lawler always said he did. Lawler's philosophy was two guys watching matches, having fun. He never wanted to prep, and JR loved prep meetings. He, G, King wanted to watch as if it was two friends watching a match enjoying it. Michael Cole and JR were always so prepared, and King wanted to be sh shocked. You know, he, he, wanted to, he wanted to be surprised when stuff happened. He didn't want to know the fallout and what was going to happen in the ring. Vince never produced King. He loved it. Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross were stars. Along the line, they don't want anyone to outshine the wrestlers, and Lawler feels like that's just missing these commentators being stars. One of the main comment Lawler's heard in his life is, King, you're the voice of my childhood. He obviously is the voice of my childhood as well. Uh, he talks about his high-pitched voice and puppies. Uh, it was He's encouraged from the high-pitched voice by Curly from the Three Stooges. And puppies come from Road Dog. Um, when the Road Dog said at one time, show us your puppies, and King said it. He talks about his WrestleMania 27 match with Michael Cole. It was his first WrestleMania match, and he wished it would have happened sooner. Uh, King thinks his match should have been shorter, and he wasn't crazy at how that match actually went. Lawler didn't want to be in the Hall of Fame at first. He thought his career would be over when he was put in. And it's told him that Jim Ross is going in. That it wasn't so much of a of a career Hall of Fame, but it's more of a commentating Hall of Fame. And you know, he laughs about how William Shatner didn't know where, that there was that there wasn't teleprompter, so he had to read glasses. He had to you know use glasses to read. And it was it was it was definitely a uh, it was a good moment for Jerry Lawler to be inducted. And that pretty much concludes the interview. Jerry Lawler doesn't really say much after that. You know, he's continuing at that time to be on Raw for a bit. And he was just, you know, happy to be a part of the interview. So it was great to learn a lot about Jerry Lawler. We learned a lot about his uh, influence in his Memphis territory, his career with Andy Kaufman, being on the David Letterman show, his commentating with Jim Ross and, made, and you know, fighting at WrestleMania 27. And being in the Hall of Fame, William Shatner, so much has stuff happened with Jerry Lawler. Thank you for tuning in. Our next Broken Skull Sessions, I'm going to reveal our two next episodes coming in May. First, Broken Skull, Skull Series with Kurt Angle, the Broken Skull Sessions. Olympic Gold Hero sits down with Stone Cold Steve Austin to talk about it so much. And our second episode of May is the Broken Skull Sessions with The Undertaker one last round definitely check it out may is gonna be a huge month for broken skull sessions thank you for tuning in hope you enjoyed it stay safe and we'll see you soon